Hello everyone. In this short video I want to talk a little bit more about perturbation theory. So we're familiar now with the basic formulas. Some of them are shown here for the first order correction to the wave function or the energy eigenstates and also the second order correction to the uh, energy levels is at the top there. And what you notice with these two formulas is that there's something kind of curious. You could imagine a situation where I have two energy states which have the same energy eigenvalue. In other words, I could imagine a situation where uh, m is not equal to n, but the energies are the same, and then the denominator of these formulas uh, seems to blow up. So one big question is, how do we handle that kind of situation? Clearly these formulas don't work, and I have to think more carefully about it. There's some ambiguity about which energy eigenstates I use when they have uh, degenerate energy states. So the idea is, let's suppose I have two energy states. Um, let's call them A and B. And that they are both uh, degenerate times B. So you can see that these two have the same energy. So A and B are degenerate energy states. Even though these have the same energy, they are different states. So we're going to say that they are orthonormal. So A, uh, B is 0. And of course, the states are normalized, so A, A and BB are equal to 1. Now when you have this kind of situation, the idea is that I could choose any combination of A and B, and it would also be an energy eigenstate. So for example, I could define two different states. Let's call them A tilde is alpha A plus beta B, where alpha and beta are some numbers. And I could do the same thing for B. These two are orthonormal if um, alpha squared plus beta squared is equal to 1. And hopefully it's not too hard to see that if I act with h hat 0 on a tilde, it's going to be alpha times h hat 0 on a plus beta times h hat 0 on b. And each of these gives me Ea, so I'm just going to get Ea times alpha A plus beta B, which is just Ea times A tilde. And you can do a similar thing for B. What this tells you is that A tilde and B tilde are also eigenstates of H0. So let me start to summarize the situation, you've got two degenerate states A and B. They're orthogonal to each other, they're normalized, and they're both eigenstates of H with the same energy. And these two, A, and A tilde and B tilde, are also going to be orthonormal, and they're also going to be eigenstates of H0 with the same energy. And so the question is, which should I use? Should I use these states, or should I use these states, or does it even matter? So to illustrate this a little bit more, let's do a particular example. I've written down here a Hamiltonian in terms of some states A and B, two states A and B. The idea here is that lambda is going to be some kind of perturbation. So you would have in mind that lambda is small, and epsilon is some energy. Let's notice that h hat on A, imagine I multiply this whole thing on the left by the ket A, because A and B are orthogonal to each other, this term will be 0. Uh, this term, when I have A multiplied by A, will become 1. This term will be 0 because B inner product with A will be 0, and this term will be 1. So you can see fairly straightforwardly that this will become epsilon times A. Um, this one is 0, and then this term will survive, so basically. This one here is coming from this bra A meeting that ket A, and the second one here is coming from this one here where that bra A meets that ket A. And you can do a similar thing for B. <clears throat> now we need to choose a basis. Let's choose the basis A and B. So A will be represented by 1, 0, and B will be represented by 0, 1. So I'm just picking those two as my basis vectors. And we can see what happens to H in this case. 
Um, H hat on A is going to be the first column. So the first column is going to be epsilon A plus lambda B. So A plus lambda B is going to be 1 lambda. And then the second column is HB. So it's going to be B plus lambda A. So it's going to be lambda 1. Okay. So this is what the matrix looks like in the basis, uh, let's call it the A, B basis. So this is the matrix representation of H in this particular basis. And you can see if lambda is equal to zero, I have uh, the eigenvalues are epsilon and epsilon, so I have one eigenvalue for two different states A and B. But now let's, let's see what happens if I define a different basis, which I could totally do. And we wanna see what does this matrix look like in that uh, basis. All right, so now we had these two degenerate states, A and B, and suppose someone comes along and says, I'm going to define some new states, A tilde, and I'm just going to define them in a very simple way here, A plus B, and B tilde, and B tilde is going to be A minus B. Suppose we use these two as our basis. So in the basis where A tilde is 1, 0, and B tilde is 1, 0. So I'm changing my coordinate system, changing my basis. What does H look like in this basis? To do that, we have to figure out the first and second columns. So what is H on A tilde? Well, it's 1 over root 2 times H on A plus H on B, obviously. <clears throat> this will be the first column of the matrix in this basis. Just on the previous board, we learned this was uh, a plus lambda b. And then this one, h hat b, was epsilon times b plus lambda a, right? So let's simplify this a little bit, which is epsilon over root 2, 1 plus lambda times a plus b. But a plus b over root 2, that's exactly just a tilde. So this is epsilon, 1 plus lambda times a tilde. And that means that the first column of this matrix will be epsilon times 1 plus lambda times a tilde, which is 1, 0. So that's going to be that's going to be the first column of the matrix H. So similarly, which means that the second column of the matrix becomes 0, epsilon, 1 minus lambda. So that means that in this basis, my Hamiltonian H looks like this. This is in a different basis. Okay, so the idea is that we had two states A and B, which are eigenstates of the unperturbed Hamiltonian with the same energy. I can define two other states, A tilde and B tilde, which are also normalized, also orthogonal to each other, and are also eigenstates of the zeroth order Hamiltonian with the energy epsilon. In this basis, if I include the perturbation, H is represented by the matrix that looks like this. And in this basis, H hat is represented by a different matrix. So this is the AB basis, and this is the A tilde, B tilde basis. Now suppose you try, you're trying to work with this Hamiltonian and you want to know the correction to the energy level, let's say E1. We know that would be something like A, uh, H hat 1, A. But you could also say, depending on if I, if I do the other basis, I would say like a tilde, h hat 1, a tilde. So I take the expectation value of h1 in the unperturbed states, but the question is which unperturbed states, these ones or these ones? I get a different answer. Here, if I choose the unperturbed states, you see there's no correction to this, I, to this element of the matrix. This would be 0. But here, there would be a correction to the diagonal element, which would be lambda, or epsilon lambda. So which one is right? That's the question. We have these two different basis states. We have two different possible representations of the Hamiltonian. And we're trying to understand which one of these I should use for perturbation theory, because they seem to give different answers. So let's go back to first order perturbation theory. So all of our equations were derived by taking the wave functions and the energy levels, adding a correction and plugging everything into the Schrodinger equation. And we ended up with an equation which looks kind of like this. 
This was the equation we got uh, when we were using first order perturbation theory. And if m is not equal to n, then this term is zero and I can use this to figure out the first order correction to the wave functions. And you end up dividing by this factor which shows up in the denominator. But the question is what happens here if uh, for a degenerate state? So what happens if uh, m is not equal to n, but en0 is equal to em0? In other words, I have degeneracy. Well, if m is not equal to n, this term is 0, obviously. If m is not equal to n, uh, this term will also be 0 because uh, we, we assumed it's going to be a degenerate state. So this will also be 0. And so this equation turns out looking like this is equal to 0. And how do we interpret this equation? What does this mean? These are the off-diagonal elements of H1 in the basis of degenerate states. So these are two degenerate states, um, and these are off-diagonal elements. And what it means is for perturbation theory to be consistent, H1 must be diagonal uh, for the degenerate states. So which one of these should I use? This one, the AB basis, or the A tilde B tilde basis? I should use this one, because I want to choose the basis where those off-diagonal elements vanish. That's what this equation tells us here. All right, so the take-home message here is suppose you're trying to do perturbation theory with some degenerate energy states. Uh, different states have the same energy. The take-home message here is that there's some freedom that you have to choose your basis among those degenerate states. And the right basis to use is the one where h hat 1, the perturbed Hamiltonian, is diagonal. If you choose this basis, um, you won't run into problems. Your perturbation theory will be consistent. And by the way, it also fixes the problem with the zeros in the denominator here because the numerator of these things will be 0. H, you know, the off-diagonal elements will be 0 when En is equal to Em and then you don't have any issue. And finally, how do you find these states where h hat 1 is diagonal? Of course, these are going to be the eigenvectors of h1. So the right basis of degenerate states to use are the ones which are eigenvectors of h1 in that subspace of degenerate states. So we'll stop here. I hope you found this useful, and we will see some examples of this in class. Thank you all for listening. Bye for now.